When a vice president, um, with all the challenges, difficulties, accusations, and misconceptions about their perceived ambitions, have you ever considered or thought about resigning? Truthfully, yes. Many times, not just once. And those who are in my office will hear me say, I would better off just sitting in the senator's office. And then my chief of staff will always say, no, the librarian post is still waiting for you to do what you and the president said you would do. So there's no going back. But you know, as humans, some things will occur and you will say, oh God, did I make the right choice? And so I have um, quite a few times said, maybe I didn't make the right choice. Maybe I'm the problem for which this marriage is having all of the stumbling blocks. It's good to internally, you know, also say, well, maybe I'm the problem. What can I do to fix it? But in spite of the many challenges, I know that the people of Liberia, when they went to cast their ballot, they looked at the combination of what uh, Ambassador We Are Den brought to the table and what I brought to the table and how we have managed to put in place during the campaign a robust team that could deal with any issue, give us proper information, give us proper advice. That's how we won. If we didn't have a good team, we probably would not have won the elections because it's good to jump around and, and do the songs, but then the strategies are important. So I know that there is a beautiful coalition team that has the expertise of many persons which we need to bring to bear. And so I pray that year number three eh, going on uh, that we won't have any regrets, uh, that we'll be allowed to fully engage. I look at my years of experience uh, and what I was able to help Madam Salif accomplish in the legislature. How can I be at this level and not being able to make the impact for which uh, the president sought when he began looking for a vice president? Uh, whatever the undercurrents are, I pray that we'll begin to look carefully at Liberia. What is it people want? How can we, again, come together and work? It is possible in the time frame that we have. And that should be our legacy. Hopefully, everyone will, at this beginning point of the year, look back and see you know, the missteps, look back and see how disjointed we were, uh, unlike doing the campaign, and somehow come together. We have to unify. We have to put the past behind us. We have to gear up for ensuring that each of us that has a part to play in the PAP, the agenda, does everything within their power to make it work so that the trust and the faith given to us in 2017 would not have been squandered. Um, do you believe there's an issue of unfettered distrust between you and the president on the one hand and you and those within the inner circle on the other hand? I think it's just one, one journey because the head of state is our leader. All of us serve with him. And as a mother, I know that if you visit my house today, and I told everyone from yesterday, oh, you know, Mr. Rodney C will be visiting me on Monday morning. And you come to the gate and they expect you and they usher you in. If I were to say anything negative after this process, maybe the next time you came, your reception will be quite different. So there are things that actually elicit the behavior that we're seeing. And like I said, I'm not a part of the background meetings or the background conversations. The reason why most women feel left out of the political sphere is that, you know, they will call a meeting at one o'clock in the morning. And at one o'clock in the morning, Rodney, I'm in bed. Uh, most women won't go out at that time. And so being men, as they are, uh, normally, this is not a strange phenomenon, that those kinds of 
you know, smaller meetings will be held. And consensus is built at certain levels. But I wouldn't say that there is a mistrust uh, in the meaning of that word. Because uh, over the last two years, with all of the wrangling going on, we've had several meetings. Some of our fathers in the land have called the both of us to say what's going on. And I know the president will always say, I don't have a problem with her. We've never argued. We've never gone at a word of words, war of words. We've never had a negative, you know, uh, embrace. And he would say, so I don't have an issue with her. And then people would say, so what is the problem? And you'll say, every day someone comes to me with a story. The vice president is this. The vice president is doing that. The vice president ha is doing another thing. And anybody will get kind of concerned. But after all of the talking, and he would say, okay, you know, you guys who are ministers and a part of the framework, everybody go to that, go work, and, and, and let's work, we got work to do. So if I were to really be truthful, you don't know what in, what's in the hearts of people, and so I can only say how I feel, that I have no, no iota of hatred or disrespect or any negative feelings towards the president. I know he's trying to accomplish a job. And those of us who are around him must sometimes put aside our personal issues and join that work. Are there issues with some of the uh, people in government? Yes, there are issues. You know, I felt disrespected, I felt ignored at some times. And I think I've been patient for a two year period just to continue to work this through. So I do believe that there is some issue here and there about or between me and some of the ministers.